we need to talk a little bit more about paper before we proceed any further. This is basic paper. It's probably the most made paper in the world. It's machine made. And it's very acidic. And we don't want to use this. You don't, you don't use brown paper for much anything other than what this was designed for, bagging groceries. Now, they take this same paper and somewhere in the processes, it, it basically starts out like this. They turn it into this kind of paper. This is the one that we most commonly see. And the way they do this is they put a lot of chemicals in there and other additives to make it white. And, and of course they roll it out, mill it out so it's a lot thinner. And the reason why I'm telling you this is we do the same thing with watercolor paper. We take this watercolor paper and they put additives in it. And they're proprietary, right? But this is the natural color, unlike this machine-made paper, which is made out of wood, you know, pine and, and other woods like that. This is made out of cotton. And sometimes they'll put cotton in this paper, and sometimes they don't. You know, it depends on the quality of paper. All right, so we'll get back to the additives. The only additive that we're really concerned about as artists is what they call sizing. Now they do put optical brighteners in there and they do buffer it, making it so that it's pH neutral or acid free. That, that, that really doesn't affect the properties of how the paint goes onto the surface. It does affect the archival properties though, of course. Now sizing is basically a starch. And they can internally size, and that's when they put it in the slurry, the, the, the paper mixture. And they let it settle down with the paper, and then they take it out. And, and you have sizing all throughout your paper. And then they can externally size it, and they put it on the surface. And that makes your paper hard. And it makes your paint react differently. When you soak your paper, the sizing and the other chemicals are going to disperse from the paper and it's going to change its paneling properties also. Even if you don't soak your paper and when you put paint on it, it's going to change those properties and when you come back the next time it's going to be a little bit different. You may or may not notice it. Most of us never notice it. But we do notice it if we stretch it because the, the paper becomes softer and, and you have to deal with it a little bit differently. These balloons that I'm showing you represent the fibers in your watercolor paper. You notice they're all tangled up. Now if this was machine made paper that would all be in a straight line. But, I, but I'm showing you this so you'll see how the fibers in your paper react to watercolors. It's purely a visual demonstration. And, and uh, now this is the fibers as they come in your water paper when you initially buy it. Uh, they haven't been wet, they still have all the sizing and all the chemicals and everything on them. Now this is what your fibers are going to look like if you just put one drop of water on your paper. And this is just in a specific area. Now notice how some of the fibers are very large and some didn't expand at all. And the reason for that is the fibers are not uniform. Some are thirstier than the others and some are not. So this is what causes some of the wrinkling in your paper when you just put it on there. It's going to sort of bulge up and you're still going to have dry fibers in there. Now the next one I show you is going to be what it looks like when we soak it. When it's totally wet and all the fibers have taken up all the moisture they can take and then we're going to see what it looks like after that dries. Now this is your paper fibers when it's totally saturated. Now we need to talk about this for a minute. When you totally saturate your paper entirely it expands just like these balloons expands. The size increases both 
height and width. And, and most of the fibers are totally saturated and they're totally full. And that's the reason why we stretch. Now, now once it's out there, you pin it down and you don't let it come back. And that's called stretching. The putting water on paper and just leaving it lie there and letting it dry out is not stretching. It's, it's just it's just expanding the paper and leaving it lie there. Now, now what occurs when it starts to dry out is what you see here, you go back the next step, the next step, and the next step back to the beginning. And that's basically what happens. And while it's doing this, imagine these balloons slowly deflating. And as they slowly deflate, they go back to the original state that they were in minus the sizing and the chemicals. Meaning when you blow up a balloon and you deflate it, it's not the same as it was as when you bought it new. Neither is paper. Once you wet it down and it dries out, it doesn't go back to its original configuration.